This video is brought to you by the Fractal Design Integra M series of power supplies. Semi-modular, 80 plus bronze rated, and just 140 millimeters long. Check the link in the description for more information. Excellent! So today, ladies and gentlemen, I have delitted my HTPC. And the reason for that is because it's making a noise. Hold on. Oh god. Oh god, what is that? It's... Okay, so um, that is the heatsink fan for the CPU, and uh, it's not sounding too good right now. now. I could go and replace that, but I think I'm just going to build a whole new HTPC. So welcome to my HTPC video. This is actually going to be video one of two. I'm going to do one a little bit more vloggy style like this one, and then the other one's going to be a bit prettier with the thing all put together because it's all in pieces right now. So uh, what I'm working on today is uh, taking the motherboard here, which is the Maximus 5 Gene. Uh, I have an Intel Core i5-3570K uh, set up in there. Uh, that's also got 8 gigabytes of Corsair Vengeance uh, low-profile memory, so that's all set up and good to go. Uh, for a video card, I think I'm going to be using the EVGA uh, GTX 970. Uh, although I do have another one I might swap in there. I might actually go with the 770, uh, which I would mainly do so I can have this 970 available for more benchmarking, of course. Uh, power supply is the new Fractal Design. Uh, Integra M, 750 watt, so that one's set up and good to go. Uh, and then what I'm really excited to kind of try out, which I'm going to do just entirely outside of the box before I build this thing, uh, is take my four WD Red 4 terabyte hard drives and set them up with the RAID array, which I'm just going to go directly through the uh, PCH right there on the Z77 motherboard and uh, see how those perform. Uh, actually, what I've been doing just now is upgrading the storage. Uh, I was on a little SanDisk uh, MSATA, just a little 64 gig there, but I'm, I upgraded it to a Plex Store uh, 256 gig MSATA drive, so that's nice. Uh, but of course, at the same time, I have the old HTPC, which I've just kind of started to gut out. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised. I was expecting the main storage to be the one that fails because it's a Seagate Momentus XD. Not that there's anything wrong with that drive inherently, but um, it's not an enterprise drive and this thing is running 24-7, so it actually did a good job keeping up. It was the fan, so uh, I have just a stock heatsink fan I'm going to swap out, but I'm going to pretty much take everything out of the system because uh, the main thing that makes this like my HTPC is my Seton Infinity V. Uh, four tuner, four HD tuner card. Now, don't worry, this system is uh, not going to go to waste. I'm going to be taking the basis of that, the ASUS motherboard that's down there, Mini ITX, and dropping that into a different case, grant you. Node 304 is what I got for that, so it's going to be a little Mini ITX system. I think I'm going to set that up as a server. And then for the main HTPC, we're going with the Node 804 because it's micro ATX. All right, I got this thing extracted from the case. Let's give it a shot. Oh, there's your problem. So in an attempt to make this a little bit more uh, uh, helpful for people who might actually be looking to try to set up an HTPC, uh, how am I doing this RAID configuration? I want I want to do RAID 5 with all these WD Reds I have. So I'm going to go into the uh, UEFI BIOS of my uh, Maximus 5 gene. And I'm going to go to the SATA configuration and under there I'm going to look at my SATA mode and I want to set it to RAID. I'm already set to RAID. If you're not, if you're on HCI and you already have Windows installed, you're going to need to switch from HCI to RAID mode. Uh, there's some things you need to do for that that's not going to be part of this video, so Google switching from HCI to RAID or RAID to HCI and that will tell you how to do that. But anyway, once you're set to that, then uh, you can go into the RAID setup utility. Uh, you also notice all my drives are connected here, the WD Reds, and uh, I have two connected to SATA 6 and two connected to SATA 3. That's because it's a micro ATX board. And ASUS decided to wire uh, some of the serial ATA ports to the back and to the MSATA, so anyway. Um, hit control I as you're booting up and that will take you into the Intel Rapid Storage Technology utility here. It's where you can create and delete RAID volumes. Um, so we're going to create one. We saw all of the drives down there. I want to name this RAID 5. Uh, RAID level right now is RAID 0. We don't want that. Go on next. Hit tab to go. Wait, no. 
Sorry, I accidentally hit tab, so now I have to go all the way through. Seeing that I hit tab too many times again, so that, all right, now we're back to raid level. On the raid level, we want to hit change, up and down, okay. Uh, so hit up, we're in raid five mode, excellent. Go tab to next, select disks, hit space to select our four WD red drives. Don't select our operating system drive because we, we want to leave that as is. Okay, uh, that will tell you the capacity. Uh, strip size, there's different varying schools of thought on that. I'm gonna leave it at 128. Uh, I wanna go with max capacity. I can leave, leave yeah, we have max capacity and we wanna create volume. It's gonna delete everything on the drives. They're brand new, so that's okay. And now we can see we've just created our red, red five uh, read array. It's awesome. You go over here to exit, and there there is one more thing we need to need to do into the operating system. So we're going to start up back into Windows 7. This is this is roughly the same with Windows 8 as well, but I'm not using Windows 8 because Windows 7 has Windows Media Player or Windows Media Center built into it, and Windows 8 you have to pay for it. Well, when we're back in the operating system, I'm going to go into Manage on my computer, and give that a second. You're still booting up, so. All right, and uh, from in here, we can go to disk management under storage. When we pop that up, it's gonna actually see that there's this brand new uninitialized disk. Hey, that's cool. It popped this up for us. If it doesn't pop up, uh, you should be able to see your, your RAID array right here, and if you don't, then something went wrong. Um, but we're gonna go with GPT. Don't do MBR, for some, especially for something this size. You'll be stuck at two, ter two terabytes max capacity. Like, <laughs> that's two terabytes. <laughs> That's hilarious. Anyway, GPT. Uh, now it's initialized, GPT. And it's the GUID partition table. Anyway, uh, and then we want to create a new volume on here. This is to format the drive. Go ahead and hit next. Yes, assign a drive letter. I like to change the label to red5. And uh, quick format is fine. If you do a full format here, oh my, oh my god, give it a few hours at least. All right, finish. It's gonna format it real quick, and then it should pop up as a usable drive. Hey, there we go. Red five. Ah, oh, glorious. Ten point nine terabytes of usable space. My sincerest apologies if this video has been a little bit jumpy. The main thing that I wanted to focus on here before we uh, move on to, I think, the last phase of the setup um, is what I'm actually switching from. So this is the uh, basis of the previous HTPC, which is in no way out of date or, or in need of being replaced. I was honestly planning on doing this new build anyway. Uh, the main reason that I'm switching this out is because it's a mini ITX board, which means I only have one PCI Express expansion slot. And since I'm using that for the uh, Infinity V card, the tuner, it's, uh, the, and I wanted to add a video card, I needed more expansion. So that's the main reason I'm swapping this out. Of course, the CPU heatsink fan needed replacement too, but uh, I mean, I, I could have done that really easily. But anyway, uh, the, the motherboard here is the P8Z77i Deluxe by ASUS. Uh, it's actually a really nice motherboard, so again, I am going to be putting this little system to use, uh, further use, I should say, uh, by making it into a home server, uh, although that's uh, going to happen in the future. The CPU at the center there is a Core i3-2105, so uh, Sandy Bridge trim, but still does a great job. And uh, one of the really nice things about the i3s is how much little how little power they use. It's absolutely fantastic. This new system is actually probably going to increase my power usage by a little bit. But uh, the other thing that I'm really happy about uh, is my RAID configuration that I have going on here. So these are four 4 terabyte WD RAID drives. They're currently configured in RAID 5, so that gives me... Uh, what should be 12 terabytes of space, but actual us usable space uh, is actually more like 11 terabytes. And I have been doing some tests here, so what I really need to verify is that these four drives in RAID 5 are going to work well as a storage array for an HTPC. Now, these are crazy overkill. I could honestly get by with one of these drives, but uh, I wanted a lot of storage and I also wanted the uh, failover uh, capabilities that RAID 5 offers. It is going to hit me with some overhead, uh, especially when it comes to write speed though, so um, I've been running some benchmarks just to see how bad that actually is. Okay, so as you can hopefully see there, there's the red 5, my five red, er, my four red drives in RAID 5. 10.9 uh, terabytes free, so that's all set up and good to go. And here's some of the benchmarks that I ran. 
So here's the Atto benchmark and uh, mainly I'm concerned about write speeds here because write speeds is what's going to take a hit with RAID 5. So uh, I managed to get up to about 170 megabytes per second here but that's only in that one. As you can see it's actually middling around at 30 to 40 maybe 50 plus megabytes per second. Uh, and a lot of these tests, those are the red lines, that's the writes. Reads I'm good on, reads I'm hitting like almost SSD-like speeds. I'm getting upwards of 400 megabytes per second, 454 there, so that's pretty cool. Uh, writes is my concern, so I'll be able to do lots of playback, and as a media server, that's great having that really nice read speed. So even switching here from Q-Depth 4 to Q-Depth 10, uh, you can see we don't get a lot of help, so that's uh, hopefully not going to be much of an issue. There's bigger numbers for you guys, hopefully you can read. Sorry about the shaky camera too. But 436.9 megabytes per second on the reads here for Crystal This Mark. Uh, just shy of 40 megabytes per second though for the writes. Uh, again, that should be fine. I should be able to do uh, upwards or four, well, well over four HD streams, and that's what uh, the cable card is capable of doing. Or HD streams simultaneously. Um, so again, this is really like going to be a very outside chance that that's going to affect me, but uh, we're going to see. So now I come to a dilemma that I come to often while building computers and filming, and that is that I need to take this system and I want to test it before I set everything up in the case, but in order to test it I need to plug in this cable card and the, uh, the, the home theater area is all the way over there. All right, everything's working over at the home theater. I got stuff moved over here. You know, it's functional for now. It's just kind of laying out, looking pretty. Uh, I think I might just leave it like this. What do you think? I don't know. I'll, I'll ask my wife, I'll see what she thinks. But uh, let's see, over here I've added a little USB receiver and that's for my uh, IO Gear keyboard, which is over here. Uh, I've been using this for a while. I got this actually from a Newegg warehouse sale and then I contacted IOGear because I was missing the USB receiver and IOGear sent it to me. So that was really awesome of IOGear and I was really happy with them about that. Nori did uh, chew one of the keys off so I was thinking about replacing this but it still works for now. It's uh, the keyboard as well as a uh, mouse. To, it's got like the trackball up there and left and right click. Uh, I've also got the Blu-ray player down here. I'm going to need to replace that because I need a slim slot loading one. We've got the Microsoft receiver for the uh, the Xbox 360 controller. Uh, that's new, so I'm can, I guess I can use that. Steve says I can use that to control a couple Xbox 360s, so that's kind of cool. Uh, I also have the main Microsoft uh, receiver here, infrared receiver for the Microsoft remote. I'll be continuing to use. Of course, all the WD Reds in their wonderful glory lined up right here. Set them on a rubber pad so they would be a little bit a little bit more stable. Although getting all the cables wired over was kind of confusing. Of course the Fractal uh, Integra M back there doing a good job. Stay nice and quiet, keep everything running. Uh, oh, and I guess I should mention I, I'm running the uh, EVGA uh, GTX 770 right now. Um, again, that's just so I can keep the 970 free for doing benchmarks and stuff like that. So that's cool. Oh, and um, before I leave, I was considering what to do about the CPU cooler. I don't have that set up yet. Um, I was going to go with like a tower air cooler with, you know, aluminum fins or something like that. But I have a couple 240mm uh, liquid coolers available too. Just, it's kind of overkill for this. It's a 3570K, so let me know what you guys think. Um, should I should I just go with the, something more simple as far as an air cooler? Should I go with the crazy water cooling setup just because I can? I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it. But uh, let me know what you guys think about that in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that like button. Uh, don't forget to subscribe because I'll be doing a part two of this video uh, where I actually do like a time lapse of the build in the actual case. That's going to be fun and uh, more stuff about it. Oh, and we'll find out how these WD Reds actually behave, how they perform recording four HD streams at once. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you later.